All right, so this video we're checking out the Mobula 7 1S, and this is the Express LRS edition. So before we take a look at the drone, let's look at what comes in the box. Um, you get spare canopy, a couple stickers, get your set of spare screws and spare props. These are the Gemfan Biblade 1610 props, 1.6 inch props. You get the proper removal tool and a screwdriver. Get this new battery charger. It's a pH 2.0 balance charger. So it basically converts uh, your 1S batteries into a 4S battery. So you plug four of them in. They should be about the same capacity and voltage. And then you plug this into your charger. Obviously you need an XD60 and a balance uh, plug. And just as a side note, they did send along uh, these new Express LRS uh, PWM receivers. So there's some more of these coming up for you guys that want to put Express LRS in your airplanes and RC cars uh, that need um, PWM signals. So we have a uh, EPW5 2.4 gigahertz version here. Comes with two antennas. And you also get the, uh, the solder on connectors if you want to solder those on. And there's the uh, EP6, EPW6 900 megahertz version of the receiver. Slightly bigger. Uh, obviously with the bigger antenna. So if you guys want to see a video on this and something let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video on this, but otherwise um, these are probably going to go into a plane and in some kind of a plane build in the future. So you probably have to look out for that and you'll see that in that video. So pretty much everything in this is new. Uh, new frame here, you can see they have a, basically the cross braces are perpendicular here. It's, um, I don't have the frame separately, so I'm not sure if it's heavier or lighter, but it does feel a little bit more Robust, obviously they redesigned it to be a little bit stronger. I think this canopy has been around a while. That's nothing new. The flight controller is totally brand new. It's called the X12. And uh, this one has uh, the built-in SPI Express LRS receiver. Uh, this version of the board is gonna come up first, as you can see in, the, in this model. Uh, the FreeSky SPI and FlySky SPI versions are gonna come out at the end of March. This one, the Express LRS version is coming out at the end of February. And I think the, the, the plug and play version with no receiver is going to come out also at the end of March. So this, um, uh, as the name indicates, indicates X12, it has a 12 amp 4-in-1 uh, ESD in here, BL Heli S, I think it's just version 16.7, nothing fancy. It is uh, Blue Jay compatible, so if you want to upgrade it to something with like 40 kilohertz or RPM filtering, it should, should be able to do that no problem. Comes with a built-in OpenVTX um, video transmitter up to 400 milliwatts power switchable. So this board has uh, basically the flight controller, the 4-in-1 ESC, the Express LRS SPI receiver, and the video transmitter all in a single board. So a uh, good thing is if, uh, you know, it makes everything kind of lighter, but the bad thing is if uh, something breaks, like if the VTX dies, then you're kind of have to get a whole new board. The camera is the OneCam Nano 3. It does have a piece of foam under the camera, between the camera and the, uh, the all-in-one flight controller board to reduce jello. And then the VTX 10 comes out here and it plugs on a micro felt connector over there, which is kind of hard to see. Camera is on a plug right there, like on, on some of the previous boards. The motors are on motor plugs as usual. You have your vertical micro USB port here on the bottom. PH 2.0 connector with solid pins. Uh, typical uh, battery tray here for your normal size batteries like the 1S uh, 450, uh, 520, and 650. These are the ones I flew with. These all fit that tray. Um, flight times are going to vary on how you fly it, but generally speaking for the type of flights that you'll see at the end, uh, about four minutes or so, five minutes or so, and six minutes or so. So on each of these batteries, four, five, six minutes. So, and I'll show you the weight here of each in a second. The motor is also new. It's a new design that they uh, had to haven't put in anything else yet. Yes, yeah, so this is an 0802 motor, uh, 20,000 kV. It's got sort of like this, um, open bell at the top here, which is new. The older motors had a uh, sort of a closed bell. This weighs about two grams, has a new one and a half millimeter prop shaft. So supposedly that will make it stronger and crashes. 
the one millimeter shafts had a tendency to bend, um, but it also makes the motor a little bit heavier. So it's about two grams. The old motor with the one millimeter shaft is like 1.7 grams, I believe. It's still on the same plug. Now this motor, uh, 20,000 kV on this uh, 1S setup is more efficient than I thought it would be. Uh, if you look at it's like the older models on the 19,000 kV motors, I don't think you can get the same flight time on the same prop. Obviously, I haven't done any, you know, A-B testing, but from what I recall from some of the models I've flown, um, this one seems to be more efficient, but it has still really good power for the KV. So I'm not really sure how they redesigned that. Don't really have any details on that, but that's something I noticed. It does seem to be a bit better than the older motor. All right, so this is how much the drone weighs by itself, uh, 24.3 grams. And then with the 1S450, we're coming in at 37.16. The 1S520, it's coming in at 37.7. And then with the 1S650, it's 39.79. Now for comparison, uh, this is the Meteor 75 1S Express LRS from Beta FPV. And this is coming in at 24.26, so a little bit lighter. Just a, about a tenth of a gram lighter, almost the same weight. And then uh, this is how I flew my Meteor 75 with the 1S450. That's what's uh, this were the recommended setup, so it's about 35 and a half grams. So something similar uh, with the 1S450. We're looking at about 37 grams, so pretty similar setup in terms of uh, 450 milliamp hour LiPo. So in terms of how it flies and the flight characteristics, you'll see how it, you know, uh, flies in the narrated flight at the end. It's uh, got a pretty good pitoon. The pitoon is uh, pretty much right up to the edge. Uh, so they don't give you a lot of room in terms of like uh, the type of types of batteries you can use. So when I went from the, I guess the, it flew the best on the heaviest battery. On the 650, you can go as low as a 450. I got more oscillations on the 450, less flight time. Obviously, it was uh, much more uh, because of the less weight. It was much more agile and more responsive. But uh, I didn't feel like it was a big drop off with the extra weight of the, the 650. I think the voltage tag on the 650 was definitely less. I didn't test multiple batteries on the Meteor 75, just the the 1S 450 because that's uh, the, because the BT 2.0 connector, the selection of batteries is not as good, but the Pitune on the Meteor 75 was not as good as the one on the Mobula 7. It, it's okay, it's still pretty good, could use a little bit of work, but I think that on on the Mobula 7, it's when you're pushing it pretty hard, you still do get a little bit of yaw wash out, um, especially as you get towards the end of the battery. Uh, there's a little bit of oscillations and um, uh, I guess you can, so you can kind of hear it in the audio, although it's kind of hard for you guys to hear because what I what I hear versus what gets recorded is it's just a little bit different. But from what for, when from what I heard at top at the top of the throttle when you're full throttle, it did give a little bit of um, oscillations. Now, you know, if I got five of these, you know, uh, with the exact same pitch and all the same hardware they're probably gonna fly a little bit differently, even on the same battery, just because of minor differences in the props, the motor construction, the way the flight controller is screwed down and how much how much um, noise the gyro gets. So, you know, you just, you're just gonna to have to probably do a little bit of tweaking because they did push the PIDs all the way up. And that's kind of why, uh, as I, mean, uh, and I mentioned in a previous, previous video that most manufacturers are doing the opposite where they kind of reduce the PIDs and give you a lot of latitude so that you can uh, not run into any uh, oscillations. Um, but they've done the opposite here. And so there is a chance that if uh, you get a build that maybe perhaps the flight controller is screwed out a little bit too tight or maybe the motors are generating a little bit too much noise, you might get hot motors. So it's something you want to check if you're flying it. Just check the motors the first few times you fly so they're not smoking hot so you don't smoke them by accident. Just because um, the PIDs are up there and there is a chance that could happen, especially if you're using like a really light battery or if your build is just off a little bit. So just something to keep in mind. Anyway, overall, it, great, it flies great. It flies better than the Meteor 75, but you know, the, the, the differences, you know, between these two, if you want to go back and look at the Meteor uh, 75 video, uh, not a huge difference. I did feel like this had more power 
than this motor. This is only 19,500 kV. I think it is the, des the updated design of this motor just give you a little bit more power and it does seem like it's a little bit more efficient as well. So still got to do, you know, some more testing on this one just to get an idea. I need to compare it to some other stuff that has maybe a similar motor. Right now, because this is a new motor, I don't really have a lot of sort of data on that yet. So we'll have to see how it, how it compares in the future. But overall, a good flyer. I think if you want to get something that is in this class, does, uh, you know, 1S batteries, freestyle, you know, a lot of acro, pretty fast, good, this is good for indoors and outdoors. Yeah, this one is definitely something you want to definitely check out, especially if you're uh, going down the Express LRS route and it's got the built-in receiver and everything. So anyway, here's the Nereid flight. Let me know what you guys think and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. All right, so I'm flying uh, this totally on stock rate, stock PIDs. And you can hear the uh, prop sounds. Pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, the uh, rates on the yaw axis are not what I'm used to. But it's uh, performing pretty nice. Let's see if I can do a power loop. Okay, a little bit of washout. Uh, power loops are not bad. The field of view in this camera is not the best for a freestyle. And this is a pretty dark overcast day. Yeah, okay, so there's a little bit of oscillation there. It's not perfect tune. It's not a lot of wind. Yeah, so pretty good uh, in terms of washout there when you do a split S. A little bit of wash out there. Overall, a uh, pretty good tune. I think that if you swap props or battery, you're gonna probably gonna need to retune this. It's got a little bit of washout on extreme moves. Let's see if I can get it to come out. Sometimes, as the voltage gets lower, you can get the washouts to come out because oh, and there's a crash. So no damage on that crash. But I can tell that, um, you know, trying to make some, some harder moves and trying to recover out of those. When the voltage drops there, it does, uh, you do have to sort of, I don't know what the right word is, compensate for the lower voltage because you don't have that same amount of power available to you when you're at full voltage or at full battery. Yeah, so I'm trying to come out of that power loop and it just drops there and tr it really is tough on the battery. Yeah, so you're going to need to get some high quality batteries of the size I'll fit that tray. But yeah, the flight time is pretty good for 20,000 kV on a 40 uh, millimeter propeller. 
This new motor does seem to be um, perhaps more efficient. And again, as the voltage drops lower and lower, you're getting more and more oscillations and washouts. So they could um, probably add some stuff to the pit tune to uh, accommodate or adjust for a lower voltage. I'm not exactly sure which setting it is, but there, I think there's a way you can do that. Yeah, the yaw rate on this thing is way higher than I like. So I'm getting like these weird, uh, weird movements on the yaw axis because I'm, I'm used to a much lower rate and a lot of expo on the yaw axis, but I, for this video, I decided not to add that stuff in there because I want to just fly it exactly the way it came out of the box. But yeah, the flight time is really good. Five minutes. I am running a 1S650 with a PH 2.0 connector. Yeah, they're still sticking with the PH 2.0 connectors. They haven't gone to the GMB27 yet, uh, for at least for happy model. But the voltage is, yeah, definitely down there. 3.1, so 0.2. I don't want to kill this battery, so I'm going to end the flight here five and a half minutes. You can probably squeeze six minutes out of here if you really want to. Let me know what you guys think.